What if I told you that allowing your swimmers to exit their wrinkled fortress more than five times per week could lower your risk of prostate cancer? Well, what if it wasn't me that was telling you? It was a peer-reviewed piece of research that followed people for 18 years. Well, in this video, we're gonna get a grip on the issue and figure out how you might be able to take your health into your own hands. This is important because one in eight men will develop prostate cancer in their life times, which is wild. I currently have just over 433,000 subscribers and 40% of you are male. That means that in just my audience, there are around 21,650 people who will get prostate cancer. Now, you might say, what's the big deal? Isn't that one of those cancers that people die with rather than from? Well, usually yes, but because of just how common it is, prostate cancer still accounts for around 3.8% of all cancer-related deaths. So if there was a way to limit that, then surely that would give a whole new meaning to beating cancer. Let's roll it back a little though, because what even is the prostate and what does it do? It's a forbidden walnut that sits just underneath the bladder and adds the fluid that your motivated minis will bathe in during their race for survival. So not ejaculating can cause that fluid to sit around the prostate for a while and Ryder and colleagues wanted to figure out what effect that might have on the prostate itself. To do that, they followed 31,925 men over 18 years and collected data about them that could impact their health, like their body mass, alcohol consumption, smoking history, ethnicity, physical activity levels, and the history of sexually transmitted infections. Ideally, they wanted to compare groups of people who drained the main the most and the least, but there were so few people that did so three times or less per month that they had to disregard that group. That means comparing the ejaculation frequency of four to seven times per month to more than 21 times per month, and they found that the latter group had a 20% lower chance of getting low risk prostate cancer. Interestingly, even though it is less common, there was no difference between the groups for high risk prostate cancer, which is the one more likely to spread to distant sites. All of this is fascinating because there are entire groups of men that are advocating retaining semen for as long as possible possible, like the NoFap movement that advises an initial period of 90 days for beginners. And that would go against the findings of Ryder and colleagues, but does the study even make sense? Because how might emptying the jingle bells regularly even reduce the risk of prostate cancer in the first place? Well, there are a few theories on this, and the first is the prostate stagnation hypothesis. Similar to what we mentioned before, over time, not releasing the secretions leads to buildup of carcinogenic compounds in the prostate that can affect its tissue over long contact times. You might then ask, what about the partner who would be receiving that semen otherwise? Well, if this is the correct theory, it seems the issue here is contact time and the prostate would have decades of undiluted contact with seminal fluid, which wouldn't apply when that is elsewhere. The second theory is about maintaining a normal prostate metabolism. Normal ejaculation could allow for normal cell functioning, including zinc and citrate metabolism, which have been shown to be important in preventing prostate cancer. The third theory is that we know that cancers are linked to stress and ejaculation can relieve stress, potentially leading to lower risks. Now, all of that makes it sound like all you need to do is ejaculate a thousand times per month and you'll become a being of pure celestial light. But there are limits to what we can tell from this study. Firstly, even though it is a pretty good study where the team controlled for some other factors that could account for these changes in prostate cancer risk, like physical activity and weight, it's possible that the people who are ejaculating more may be generally healthier than those who are not. It may be then that the collected data didn't reflect all of those differences. What that means, especially because this was an observational study, is that ejaculation frequency is linked to prostate cancer risk, but we can't say that it causes it. That is still important because if you're avoiding juggling the jewels because you think it's bad for you, then Ryder and colleagues suggest otherwise. Now you may also say that the worries aren't just around the act itself, 
but what people use to get it done, adult content. For that, there was another study called Harper and colleagues who found that the use of adult content became problematic in around three to 8% of people studied, meaning associations with feelings of guilt and worsening mental health. The main reasons for this seem to be preconceived ideas about what the use of this type of content meant and the presence of loneliness. So yes, it can be damaging for some people and that is where things like NoFap might have some value in trying to help. A small diamond in a bed of misinformation. Alpha bros have also claimed retaining your swimmers actually increases your testosterone, but the evidence on this is mixed and some studies even show that testosterone increases drastically at the point of ejaculation, but then that only lasts around 10 minutes, probably longer than the act itself. It's also important to mention that much more crucial things for your prostate health include how much alcohol you drink, whether you smoke, what your ethnicity is, whether you're overweight or not, and how often you get physical examinations or your blood's done. But for now, it does seem like your prostate health is in your hands, but who knows what the future holds. If for you, that's the pitter-patter of little feet, then you might be more interested in this video here. <laughs>